I call this lecture activators because um, we look at architecture as something that's not just a uh, background, that's not something that just becomes a frame to urban life and to um, a communal life, but something that becomes more participant in everyday life. Um, this also means that we look at architecture not necessarily as a, uh, a condition that has a stable condition or it's, um, let's say, a one ideal state, but it changes and goes through different phases and mutates according to seasons, weather, occupation patterns, um, program changes, and so forth. It also means that we're looking into the extension of the material of architecture into new technology, new materials, um, something that you know, is definitely part of um, uh, that's driving this country is a lot too. And we look, of course, into sustainability, not only in, let's say, climatic and ecological issues, but the whole complexity of sustainability. That means social and cultural responsibility, um, as well as um, political and economic responsibilities, too. Um, especially in Germany, like, it started, maybe the movement started about 30 years ago. And while it was in the beginning more or less kind of looked at uh, with suspicion, now it becomes a real strong economy factor and a lot of what we see now in the market is actually products that are developed for ecological um, sensitive um, issues, material production, waste uh, control and so forth. So you don't really see it just as something that's good but something that's actually very much now supporting the German economy too. Um, what I'm also wanting to wanted to do it today is show small scale objects all the way to large scale objects, especially in the context of talking to students um, who are you know, still like, trying to find out what this profession means maybe. Um, it's important for me to show that ideas that you can formulate in small scale um, also reflect in the production or the design evolution of large scale projects. And just as a starting point, then I'm showing a lot of pictures. Um, we start mostly with the idea of the surface. Um, something like when the writer sits down and has a white piece of paper in front of them and has to start with a story and lay out um, the structure of the piece. That's somehow like what we used um, or use as a starting point to design. Looking at the surface as something with depth, with um, a density, uh, looking into information values of that surface, haptic and sensorial qualities, and of course issues of transparency and um, opaqueness. Um, all this of course only works if you have a team that's really dedicated and um, like jumps on these issues and challenges. And um, I'm very lucky to have a really, uh, a really kind of enthusiastic team around us. And of course it also works with a network of interdisciplinary researchers, um, engineers, uh, designers, um, philosophers. So it's not a kind of a solitary profession, I think the beauty of architecture. I'm starting with a piece um, that's very much about communication. It's the Style Park Lounge that was designed for the World Architects Congress in Berlin in 2001, I think. And this was for Style Park, which is a web-based company that makes a selection of design products so you can go there and inform yourself. But also, it actually brings together different companies with their research um, departments, trying to see where certain developments in space, communication, uh, architecture can go. So we were asked to design a meeting point that's a meeting point, an information place for style park, of course, um, with different projection possibilities, internet terminals, and also just a hangout place to relax. Um, we proposed this space here um, at the intersection of the fair and the compress. Um, that is all like one landscape made of a material linoleum that goes from floors up to the furniture pieces, the walls, and so forth. And the idea was to program this flat surface, this flat piece of paper, if you like, um, according to different programs that were, we were asked for. So for terminals, for lounge areas, for protection areas, we pushed everything into that surface that kind of swallows it and then thickens and becomes this kind of topography. The idea was also to have it recombinable. So what you see here are these 60 centimeter wide strips. And the dark parts are the modulated parts and the lighter gray parts are strips that then expand into the space. So you can use it, uh, there was no kind of pre-described way how you would use these spaces or this, this topography. 
And um, what was actually quite nice in terms of producing this, we kind of developed the shapes and sent these files to the apartment maker, and they just you know, put it into their machines and cut it out. So in a way, it also means that producing new technology is a completely different way how you produce these things and how the communication between you as an architect or designer and the producers then work. So it was wood structure with this, uh, with this linoleum that uh, you see here. So here's the, the bar, everything was pushed in, the storage areas, and therefore you, know, you create these different uh, possibilities how to use that floor, wall, uh, furniture space. We tried to push everything into the surface except for the keyboard and the mouse. At some point the money ran out, so we had to kind of keep it up. Um, a more, let's say, a conceptually strong uh, interpretation of that flat surface that gets thickened and creates a landscape was an exhibition design for um, a show called Control Space in Karlsruhe. It's the Center for Media and Art. And this show, for the first time, brought together artists that work with issues of surveillance and control. Um, for example, toys, you know, like little bears where one of the eyes had a video camera in there so the parents could kind of survey the kids. There were artists who performed in front of video cameras in New York, not to the public audience in public space, but to the surveillance personnel or like the, the people who watch all the surveillance cameras. So the whole issue of like what the hierarchy of control was um, presented here with artists' work. So what you see here is um, a layout of the space. It's really huge, it's like 3,000 square meters. And again, the similar idea is started to generate this space. Field, basically flat surface, upstanding person kind of has the best view to survey a kind of flat piece of land. Now when you start to occupy this flat piece of land with different artworks, some you know, needed spaces because they need to be dark for videos, uh, big paintings that needed uh, a wall, um, platforms for little sculpture products. So you create this uh, landscape, and therefore, of course, you know, you're blocked with your view. What we tried to do as architects was not only looking at how to display these things, but how we can even make the exhibition into an experience as a visitor and trying to also use the material that's there, which is also surveillance cameras and the, um, the light, um, the, ex the infrared lights and everything that the artists work, and use that oversaturated technology space also for our experience. So this was the first layer, like something like a barcode with different um, spatial possibilities. But we also worked with a software company that um, developed a pattern similar to maybe now postage um, stamps uh, that every, they look like checkerboards but they have individual black and white patterns. So when you go and buy a ticket for the, um, the exhibition, you would get a pattern that you just put on like in museums nowadays. Now by walking through the exhibition, all these cameras would record you and there's a software that would actually trace you where you are while you're in the space. And the idea was that when you check out, but first of all, we assume that different kind of characteristics and how you walk through the space, from running only from one highlight to the other, to having a short extent attention span, so you look at everything in the beginning, but then you kind of lose it later on. So the idea was when you check out, um, there's a checkout desk, and you could get a printout of your personal walking run through the exhibition. Now this is not so new anymore now because we know that everybody with mobile phones is traced all the time, but in 2001, um, this was still an issue, um, we talked about in Germany at least, about like, how you leave certain information behind when you walk and you just do your everyday routine. And the idea was not to only make this as a surveillance thing, but then if you would come back and look at the show again, you would actually start to rethink how you would draw your own walking pattern um, by going through the exhibition. So that's again like an issue of when does control become something that also can be used in a return way um, as a productive way to influence something back. Uh, all this was not really realized because um, the money 